So we've done a video going through the animation UI, um, and I said I'd go through the filter node processing a little bit more carefully, which is how you um, isolate what nodes inside a rig you're going to use. If I open up the animation toolkit again, what we're going to be talking about is this setup here. This is how we identify nodes within a rig. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a file from the unit testing in Red9, which uh, comes with the kit. So if I open up uh, the Red9 in tests, in test files, there is a thing here called filter node base test. And this is what the unit tests use to make sure this code is still up and running. First thing you'll notice is a scene review will pop up. Um, in the actual, in the uh, 1.27 build, there's a, there's a bug with that. I've got to release another version of it, which means this is actually got an, uh, an issue with it. But this is the whole point of the scene review. It just tells you what's going on with the scene. This is just a pop up. So if we look at this scene, what we've got, we've got, uh, we've got two scene routes. Uh, world route, and the reason for a two routes is just for me to make sure that I'm isolating the right nodes in the tests. But let's say this is the root of our rig, and you can see if we expand that down, what we've got inside the root, we've got a mixture of joints, uh, nerves, we've got some locators in there, some meshes in there, a bit of everything. And like I say, what I'm going to do is I'll just clear the decks on this. So if we go to basic setup, uh, we'll clear that. Okay, so this is the this is the basic filter. Now, the filter is a top-down filter, so the first thing it will run is MetaRig. Now, we'll get to that in another video. Next filter it runs is a node type, which is simply the CMDS um, list nodes of type. There is a, a little caveat to that in that if we open up the search UI, both of these run the same code. I said earlier in, uh, in one of the other videos that this is clamped to transforms. This isn't, so we'll show you that in a second. If, for, if for example, I go uh, in here and we'll go right-click, we go, I want nodes of type nerves curve. If I select the world root filter, what we get is the transform of that nerves curve. So if we just go show shape, you see we've got the transform node selected. If we use this filter here, you'll see there's an extra button here, return transforms where applicable. So in the animation tools, that's thrown for you by default. Um, there's no way around it. This is designed to work with transforms. This is the node searcher, which is really exactly the same thing, but you've got control over that flag. So if I do the same thing in this UI, no types, in fact we use this thing here, we've just got some check boxes on the top here to make it a bit easier in this UI. I'm going to take that one off, search, you'll see it's actually giving me the shapes. If I put that on, it gives me the transforms. So that's the only difference really between these two UIs. This one you have extra control. Um, the other one is that this is a world-based um, uh, filter. So if, for example, I just let's collapse those up a little bit. We've see we've got two routes in here. If I have nothing selected, from selected here, if I take that off, filter, it'll go away and filter everything inside the scene that matches this filter. But uh, I mainly want to concentrate on the one in the animation UI today. So we've got nerves curves, so let's go world nerves curves. Um, now, this uh, is a stack thing, so basically you can say anything that matches these node types within it. Uh, if you've got your own node types um, coming from custom plugins, if you just comma separate it and you type your custom node in there, It'll filter for those as well. So that's quite an easy one. Um, I'm going to leave that blank for the time being. And what that basically means is that if I do filter, it gives me everything underneath it. It ignores shapes. Again, this is a transform node, so I'm going to hide the shapes here. So it gives me everything underneath that root, mainly because I want to go through these two. So search atters is doing exactly that. It's um, I know, for example, within these, I've got a few uh, nodes in here. You see they've got marker atters. It basically means that they've got attributes inside the systems that I know I can pick up with a unit test. So if I come down to extras, there's one called marker atter. So if in this UI I go, um, what we say, marker atter, and I'll select the world root, click, there we go, it's got everything that's had that marker atter in it. Um, and again, this has come separated, so we can go, I know for example, there's another one called float atter, and again, this is another thing that I use inside the unit tests. And that's picked up these poles down here. Now that's great, but what if you want to be a bit more specific in there? Okay, so let's say I only want to if marker at it, we'll do the marker at it for starters, we'll get rid of the float there. I only want it if that equals right. And we'll do the same test. So that means that this one in here has got a marker at it, and the marker at it is right, which means it's ignored this one here, whose marker at it is left. So you can see that you can isolate various things. Now, what happens if I want everything with marker at it? I'd only want the ones where the marker after is left. And maybe there's a marker after which is center as well. So let's put another one in there. 
I'm going to go marker atter again. And in this case, I'm going to go not. Not is an operator in this case, and it's not with a, a colon in there. And what that's going to do is going to give me everything that's got marker atter, but it's going to ignore any where marker atter equals right. And if I test filter again, you'll see it's picked these ones up. And hopefully those are marker atter left. And that one's got marker atter with nothing in it. So you can see it's got everything with marker atter, and it's ignored them where the marker atter is right. Um, now the other thing on this is it will also do float comparisons as well. So for example, in the one that I know is also on uh, these two nodes down here, I know we've got a float atter. So if we do this just to make sure it picked them up, there they are. And let's have a look at that one. Okay, 2.533. This is a this is a float atter, but it's by tolerance. So it's not just a simple string comparison. This is a tolerance compare against the values themselves. Now we'll go 2.533, which means it picked that one up and it's ignored that one whose float atter is set to zero. So you can see that we can build up some quite complicated uh, filters literally just by doing marker attributes. Now the results of this filter are passed into this next filter, which is a node name pattern matching. So let's say we've gone through and we found everything that we need of type. Um, in fact, let's put a type on. No, we won't put a type on there because it means we'll... Um, no, we won't. We'll leave the types off. But you could quite easily say, okay, we want just the NURBS curves, which will just pick me that one up. But I just want to go through this thing here. Uh, so looking through this, we'll go, okay, we want anything that's got CTRL in the system. Root, test. There we go. So we've got both that match these filters. So that basically means that this has got either the float atter whose value is 5.3, or it's got a marker atter whose value does not equal right, and its name has CTRL in it. Now this is a regex expression, which means you can it will compile whatever you want in there. Um, anyone that knows about Python and regex, um, you'll you get a grip on this. Um, you can see as we hover, hover over this thing, it'll also say that we have um, clamping left and right. Again, that's regular um, a reg, regex pattern matching. So you can see that by using these, we can really pinpoint every node that we want within a rig. And that's the whole point of this. The whole point is to go through a hierarchy and say, I want just these nodes because those are the controllers within my systems. But then what about this? No priorities. Um, for this, I'm going to load another scene up just to show you how important this actually is within certain systems in the Red 9. And I'm going to open up a file from a friend of mine, uh, which is that one there. Let's let this one open up. This is a couple of penguins in the scene. And it's a proper production rig. It's from a commercial. If my PC up, there we go. Okay, so penguin at him. Now, I've got a filter already down here for him, but I'm just going to build a quick one up. Let's just clear all the decks on this, and we'll go basic filter. Let's get rid of those. Actually, no, we'll leave notes curves in, because I think that pretty much covers it on this guy. Two roots, test filter, notes curves. I think that's about it. Just double check with the one that I've already... Oh, there we go. I'll put a CTRL in there as well, just to make sure. And I'm just going to clear those process hierarchies. You know, if we right click, we've got another menu in here. So the priorities, what are those? Well, when we showed you the other day about the um, loading up poses and loading relative poses and one of the characters exploded, it's just, I was saying it's about the order in which the, the, the rig is processed. There's two places that uh, that is used. One is the relative poses and the, po and the point cloud. And the other one is in the animation kit, the snap transforms. And the reason for that is that the rig is taking data from one rig or from a stored pose and loading it back in, and it's loading it in a specific order, and it's snapping it in world transforms. So you can imagine if we do a snap and we process um, the hips into a certain place. I can't move these in this case. If these were translates, uh, let's, say we do, let's say we do that with the hips, and they've been snapped into the correct place, and we snap those before we snap the cog. So the cog then snaps into the X place. You're getting double transforms on these nodes and things tend to explode or implode, I should say. Um, and I'm going to show you that with this guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, po a pose, uh, excuse me, a pose point cloud. It's going to set his root up here. I'm going to say hierarchy. So it's going to be using this, which we've already tested. We know this thing picks him up quite well. I've set the root here. And I'm going to use this pose point cloud. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, the cloud. So I'm going to select a node. The node is the the reference for the pivot where you're going to uh, intend the point cloud to be based around. And then optionally, I'm going to shift select the mesh in this case. Um, now again, if you 
wiring things up properly. If you make a wire between the, the root here and this mesh called render meshes, this will get picked up for you. If you haven't got one, then the second selected node, when you're making this point, pose point cloud, if it's found to be a mesh, will be used as reference. So I'm just going to make the cloud. Excuse me, that. Now what I'm going to do just to show this going wrong is I'm going to shift him up. In fact, let's just uh, take it to a bit of frame where we know some data in there. Let's just update point, uh, the uh, point cloud. Okay. So I'm going to shift him up and I'm going to rotate him around a bit. That should do. And then we're going to snap pose. Now what you'll see there is we've got some stuff going wrong and that's basically because the hips have been snapped um, after or before the, um, the pole vector. So in other words, the order in which that snap is happening is wrong. And just to prove that if you hit the snap pose again, because you're now snapping a second time, then it snaps back into place. Incidentally, that's exactly what uh, this thing here, this iterations is, this uh, snap transforms. If the first pass is wrong, i.e. we snapped node A before we meant to snap node B, uh, the second iteration, because node A is already in the right place, node B will then snap back into the correct place. But it's better to get this uh, this snap priorities right in the first place. So we can see with this one it went wrong. So what I'm going to do to correct that, I'm going to delete that post point cloud again, is I'm going to give it a hint as to which order these nodes should be snapped in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap, select, sorry, I'm going to select the cog. Let's just go to this for a sec. I'm going to select the cog. Uh, I'm going to select the feet. I'm going to select the wrists. And then I'm going to select the hips. And you go to the red line, right click. Set priorities from selected. Bosh, and there you go. So it's going to select cog, then the feet, then the arms, and the hips. And this is the order. This is a, a an order um, priority, if you like. So what it's going to do is, when we do this test filter, the results from that, these are then pushed right to the head of those results, which means they get processed first. And just to make sure that that's actually fixed this issue, if I come back to this guy, I'm going to do the same again. So I'm going to select a node, I select his mesh, make the cloud. I'm going to shift him up. I'm going to, in fact, let's do something really horrible. Let's rotate him round that way and that way, and then we'll snap. And you should see everything is still bang in place. And that's because the order of these things has now been rectified, and this is the order that we're saying these are going to get processed first. Um, and that pretty much goes through this this uh, setup. The only thing left to do really is to store the filter. So we're just going to go store new filter, give it a name. Finish pen, that'll do, penguin. Set, which is, where do we put it? Finish penguin, which is there. Stored all the data out. So next time you want to process this rig, all you've got to do is select this, and that's, um, that's what you've got to do. I uh, hope that helps. Thank you.